Hi, my name is Gary Emerald with uh, Tentmaker Ministries. I'm sitting here in my backyard doing a little bit of fishing in a little tiny lake in Herman, Missouri called Seatel. It means uh, Valley of the Sea. And uh, fishing, I guess, has a lot to do with my testimony and my story of, of Jesus and Christianity and the church and things like that. When I read the, the accounts in the Bible of, uh, of fishing stories, uh, they, they catch my, uh, my eye a little bit more than, than a lot of the other things, you know, like sheep and things like that. I can identify with fish. As a matter of fact, when I, uh, the, the, the time that, that Jesus entered into my uh, life, I built a bass pond in my backyard. Uh, now, in my community, we had a bass pond. We had a pond for the whole community. I had a reservoir in my backyard that uh, was a huge reservoir, about a mile in the woods. We had several rivers near us. We had the Chesapeake Lake, a bay, within a, an hour's driving distance from my house. Uh, I had a river in the back of the business that I had. We had lots of water, but I had to have my own private bass pond in my own backyard. That's how uh, obsessed I was with fishing back in those days. Well, anyway, when I built that bass pond, the county came out and said, that pond isn't gonna fill up. You're wasting your money. Well, I didn't care. I was gonna put a, a well in there to fill it up if that's what it took. It wasn't a large pond, just enough for me to catch a three, four pound bass, cook it up right there in the backyard, and uh, watch the sunset while I'm drinking my Coors beer. That to me was heaven on earth. Well, that pond never filled up. Five months of rain and snow, and all I had was three and a half feet of water and mud. And uh, it looked like the county was right. The thing was never gonna fill up. Well, on the day that I said my first prayer to God to heal me of alcoholism, that day, Valentine's Day, my bass pond filled with over four feet of water. It overflowed. That was the beginning of my walk with Jesus. Had to do with fishing, had to do with lots of water. Jesus had a lot to say about fishing. You know what? Jesus is the greatest fisherman on the face of the earth, but you would never know that based on what the church says about Jesus and his fishing. According to the church, all the fishing that Jesus did for lost souls in this world will only reap a handful of chosen frozen that will be in the net of Jesus, that will escape the eternal flames of eternal damnation in a lake, <laughs> lake, lake of fire and brimstone that most of mankind is going to swim in this lake of fire and brimstone and be eternally damned forever cursing God and probably being proud that uh, that they somehow escaped the net of Jesus they uh, their rebellion they won Satan won self won sin won most of mankind in hell, free in rebellion, lusts, miserable. Now Jesus said something in John that was kind of amazing. He said in John 12, 32, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw, will drag, in the Greek, all mankind unto myself. Now that word drag is an interesting word. When uh, the disciples put their nets out, when Jesus told them to uh, you know, put the nets out at a particular place, and they said, man, we've been fishing all night and haven't caught anything, but we'll do what you tell, you, what, what you tell us to do. Well, they put the, the net out, and they had so many fish, they could just barely bring it into shore. That word drag, drag the fish into shore, you know, these fish are coming against their will, believe me. 
Jesus said that he will drag, draw, Helkuo, all mankind unto himself. And, and this he said signifying what manner of death he should die, that, that is the death of the cross. I will drag all mankind unto myself. I've got a net here. I will drag all mankind, draw all mankind unto myself. All mankind unto myself. And there are dozens and dozens of scriptures that said that that say that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father that of him and to him and through him are all things. All authority and, on, and all power has been given unto Jesus. The power over death, the power over hell, the power over sickness, disease, everything. Jesus has been given by, Jesus, by, by the God the Father, everything. He says, all that the Father has is mine. And of all that the Father has, I will lose nothing. The net of Jesus Christ, when he went to the cross and he was fishing for all the souls who died in Adam, he came to save all. He came to be the savior of all. He came to abolish all death. He came to taste death for every man. He came to salt every man with fire and be saved by that fire. Jesus came to reconcile all mankind unto himself. Paul tells us God will have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And Paul said for this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who's the savior of all mankind, especially of those that believe. And John the Apostle said many times, Jesus Christ, Savior of all. You know, the Pharisees didn't like that very much. Even the Apostles didn't like that very much. The Samaritans who rejected Jesus, they went out there and preached and they evangelized. And John and James came back and, and uh, said, Jesus, do you want us to put fire on, call fire on their head like Elijah? You want us, you want us to get started this, this lake of fire? And, and start with these Samaritans. And Jesus said, you don't know what manner of spirit you're of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives. He came to save them. Jesus is the greatest fisher of men and women the world has ever seen. His apostles were called to become fishers of men. Peter, a fisherman became a great fisher of men. 25 years ago, I was called by Jesus Christ to fish for men. And I spend most of my waking hours, and actually even while I'm asleep, I'm fishing for men and women all over the world on the seven continents of the world. Our, our websites and our books and our CDs and DVDs reach people all over the globe 24-7, 365 days a year. I'm always fishing for men. And you know why? Because the greatest fisherman of all, he rules in my heart. And I am in agreement with him. He desires all men to be saved. He wills all men to be saved. He has the power and the authority to do so. And more importantly, he has the love to overcome his enemies, even his enemies, even the ones that put him to the cross. He had the power to say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And you know what? I'm just stupid enough to believe that the Father indeed has forgiven all mankind because we all have put Jesus on the cross. He died for you, whether today you realize it or not. 
not only did he die for you, but he gave you the gift of eternal life. He loves you with a love that my mind cannot even get around, my heart cannot even get around. Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, my friend, no matter how estranged you are from God today, He will put a hook in your heart and He will draw you to Himself. And I know the great fisherman. He won't lose you in a lake of eternal damnation. His love will pull you out of anything that you have thrown yourself into and anything that religionists have consigned you to. Yes, many Christians and Jews and Muslims have consigned billions of people on the face of this earth to eternal damnation. Mercy shall triumph over judgment, James 2.13. And my dear fish, whether you're a, a salmon or a trout or a largemouth bass or a little perch, my dear fish friend, you will be redeemed, you will be reconciled, you will be restored, you will be loved back into a sound mind that will look at the crucified Savior and say, one day, my Lord and my God and my friend. Now, back to catching some real fish in Lake Seatown.